Hi, I'm James Vincent, one of the piano teachers from Vincent Music. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on improvising. Um, what am I doing again? Yeah, improvising the left hand and the right hand together with in the keys of uh, E flat and A, and showing you different some different uh, chord pro chord progressions and voicings you could use for your left hand while you're improvising in the right. So. Uh, this this is aimed at doing uh, rock school exams. So if you're trying to, you know, play something in E flat, you might be already used to at a grade three level playing something in the key of E flat and improvising a melody over it, while there's a backing playing or your band's playing. But at this level, I want to start introducing the left hand. I'm going to show you steps and ways of doing that. So we're taking a Taking a bar, an eight bar progression here. Um, um, now it's from the, it's actually from the grade three book, but we can repurpose it for, for grade four because uh, similar criteria of keys, although you may find the bar lengths a bit longer. So they might give you a 12 bar um, pattern, chord pattern in uh, E flat major. So you can see that pattern there I'm using. It's got uh, E flat major seven, B flat seven, a flat major seven, E flat major seven, C minor seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven, and E flat major seven. The first thing is I, I'd, I'd get the backing or put on a metronome click just to see if you can get these bass lines. It's semi breeze over each channel, so A flat. slide that down a bit and then learning to to improvise on top of that so at this stage you should be used to uh, creating melodies or melodic fragments and I'd recommend when you're starting at this um, the whole left and right coordination because sometimes it really throw your left hand off you get so obsessed by making that um uh, that melody pattern and trying to be creative that you forget about just doing the basic uh, left hand in time and making it reliable. So keep it simple. You know, I'd play the left you, while you're learning to do this. Play the left hand first, and then play the right hand. So there's always that space from the first beat. Something like. start smoothing them over, particularly the beginnings and the ends there. Here's an example of an impro. Now to start looking at the build the left hand a little bit more interesting, make it more complex. We can start with some, some basic two notes. So these chords, although they've got seven chords, which imply uh, some you know some jazz jazz chords and jazz sounds in this, you uh, you could just keep it simple uh, using things like octaves, fifths, and thirds, all with the bass in the root position. So meaning like E flat, you could do that. You have um, in fact you have three choices. That would be with the fifth. B flat, you could go through all these the different ranges. So I think we have four chords here: E flat, B flat, A flat, uh, and C minor. If you ignore the sevens for a moment. So with that, we could practice each one. So we could go through. Uh, I mean, a nice, a nice simple one is always the octaves. E flat, but we can go through each one. Three to play. 
play with. Now you could do that all, you know, just sort of randomly, but it's nice to find smooth voicing transitions. This is the idea of voicing comes into play. Now voicing is basically, you know, being thinking about uh, each note of the chord as like a voice, as they would say, you were singing it. Um, now the bass, not so, not so much. It can, it, it can jump around, but that top one in particular, if we could make that smoothly transition to another note, you're going to get a much smoother sound and more uh, a meshed, cohesive sound. So, for example, let's see what we can do here. So, from the E flat to the B flat, we could start with an octave to the E flat, and then we move to the B flat out of our selection from. B. I would choose the third because it's much it's a smoother transition. You see that? Yeah, and so on. That's quite nice. And then from there, you could go to the A flat, which is just next door. You could also go out to the fifth that way. Now I realise there's there's thirds missing for the, the harmony purist, but there's a lot you can do with the improvising of the right hand that's going to help fill that out. And there might be stuff implied in the backing as well. Um, and this just things keep keeps things simple to, to get started. So the B, you've got two choices. So it becomes like a I don't know if you're old enough to uh, know choose your own adventure, but you can kind of pick your your path here. From what you choose. So if I just go, I'll just start one here. B flat, A flat, and for this one, I'm going to move to the fifth. So what happened, although the bass was jumping around, the top one was quite, you didn't move very far at all. The top note's your. It's got like a second melody line. See how smooth that is? You know, and that, that's, that works quite well. And then you continue. So for C minor, sometimes that a four bar phrase, an eight bar phrase, that's a good time to lift the whole left hand and move, move to a new position, but even keeping with that logic, we went to C, from that's quite a, a smooth transition, and then to B flat, you've got, I would probably go uh, up to something different, and for A flat, you could even do something like this, where the bottom note's smooth, and the top one jumps a bit. Actually, a better choice could be just to get that octave and finish with a third at the end. You got that, the top one moving smoothly. I guess melodies can jump around at the extreme of the harmony. Bass notes can jump around at the extreme of the harmony. So the more we can keep those inner voices moving, very you know, limiting their movement to just you know one or two steps, and even to the same note. Uh, just ideal. You get a very smooth counterbalance to the the bass and melody that's moving outside uh, around a lot more. Um, let's see what we can do with that. So the whole thing might sound like. two notes and there's tons of options because you could have gone uh, instead of going you could have started with E flat for third together and gone something like see you'll notice in that case the right the upper note Step there and back to one step there. So 
that's nice. You could have also started with, let's say, a fifth. The B player, you probably just stretch that off and that keeps that note identical. Play the way it's worked. So multiple options to get used to here. Um, and yeah, then you can start getting into the three note voicings. So again, we're in E flat major. Um, the event of the seventh brings in some interesting, um, interesting things. <laughs> Let's just say it. So you could, you, with a point in harmony, when you start realizing the fifth is often the least important in the harmony, and particularly in jazz, they stress it. So for a three note chord, it starts to become more limited. So for an E flat major seven, you might have the first, the third and the seventh of each chord. And it has to move a little bit more. Um, well, there's, there's a bunch of ways to do this. So it's just so we've got that. switch between three note and two note because the sevenths will, will give you a sort of a, a, a dissonant sound you've got to be careful how you use them but in this case I'm switching I'm starting with an E flat major seven going to B flat third A flat seven I'm starting to use some of these chords out out of root position so root position means the name of the chord note is on the bottom So when you can get that smooth movement, it's often set in, in jazz sevens to thirds can you work quite well. E flat major seven, B flat, A flat, back to the E flat major seven, the seventh C minor seven, B flat seven, A flat seven, and E flat. So it's that eight three notes in. Jazz, like the other way, sort of, if you're getting, if you want to keep the fifth, then you could do sort of uh, inversions of the chords. So you might do E flat, B flat, A flat. So. Yeah, the three notes does take a lot of practice. It can be a lot more advanced, um, but there's some ideas of how to how to use uh, some some left hand voicings in both jazz, pop, and just a simple two note style that will get you a lot of places um, when you're improvising. Anyway, hope that was helpful, and um, catch you next time.